agriculture is an important contributor to Ghana's export earnings and also a major source of income for a majority of the population. In recent times, there has been a reduction in growth in agriculture, which needs to be reversed through appropriate policies and increased investment. Statistics from the Ministry of Food and Agriculture indicate growth in the sector dropped to 0.9% in 2014, jumped to 2.3% in 2015, and went up again to 2.9% in 2016. Although not a new concept, agroecology is today gaining interest worldwide as an effective answer to climate change and the interrelated challenges facing food systems. Many countries in Europe, including France and Germany, have fully embraced the concept. Agroecology is about real agriculture work of nature, which is different from mainstream agriculture, where it is about exploiting nature. Generally, um, in agroecology, we are interested in the balance between nature and man, so that the production system emphasizes the use of more natural means than the use of mineral or chemical um, inputs. Terms such as agroecology, conservation farming and ecologically responsible farming are all used to refer to the promotion of economically viable, environmentally friendly and sustainable farming as well as enabling human development with a particular focus on food security and human health. Agroecology aims at protecting the environment, ensuring sustainable renewal of natural resources necessary for production, and making sparing use of non-renewable resources. Agroecological farming is all about the practices and techniques of sustainable farming. And in here, we see a combination of traditional knowledge, farmer's experience, and then the science of agroecological principles applied to the food systems. By gradually eliminating the use of chemicals, it strives toward implementing organic farming that's contributing to improving the health of farmers and consumers. Man has to learn to coexist with the natural environment in such a way that the consequences of his own actions don't come back to haunt him. Proponents of this type of agriculture say it is the best approach in achieving a balance between human beings, farming and nature, and ensure food safety. Globally, we have a challenge of climate change, where um, there's vast, very fast deforestation going on because of the kind of agriculture we're doing, which is uh, adding to increasing the temperature of the atmosphere. And increasing the temperature of the atmosphere goes with a lot of you know, catastrophic things that can happen to us as, as, a, as humanity. And that's why the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, which is a big global organization that directs our food, food systems, is calling for agroecology. In the same way, civil society at the continental level, which is also pushing for agroecology as against industrial agriculture. Climate change effect does not just affect the farmer. Now, look at pollution. Environmental pollution, the soil is getting polluted with a whole lot of pesticides, synthetic products, they go off-site. And so if people think that it is a farmer that applying the system of the day, the modern day agricultural technology, industrial agricultural technology that is suffering, it's not so. It's everybody's problem. Ghana embarked on the Farm Input Subsidy Program, FISP, in 2008. The goal of FISP is to enhance food self-sufficiency by increasing smallholder farmers' access to 
and use of improved agricultural inputs, thereby boosting the incomes of farmers. Basically what we were interested in was to look at the whole program from its inception in 2008 through to 2017 and look at the government's expenditure annually on that program versus what we are getting out in terms of um, the intended objectives um, of the program, increasing farm output, but better still um, measured as productivity, so increases in yield. Unfortunately, um, over the period, um, one finds that the expenditure in absolute terms was um, increasing, but um, if we look at it in the context of the CADEP um, agreement that required the government to spend a certain amount of its budget, a certain share of its budget on agriculture, Ghana fell short. But if we look at the absolute amounts relative to the total amount of money that was voted to the Ministry of Agriculture, um, you would immediately come to the conclusion that it is not sustainable. In 2017, the government introduced the Planting for Food and Jobs program to increase productivity. Even though Dr. Jato lauded the initiative, he said the greater part of the investment is on the importation of subsidized fertilizer which has heavy toll on the Ministry of Food and Agriculture's budget. In some of the years, the share of MOFA expenditure that went into the fertilizer subsidy program alone was as high as 33%. And yet, if you look at it, you also realize that um, the, while the expenditure itself was increasing and we also have some data that suggests that the application rates of fertilizers are increasing in the country. The yields of the targeted crops for like maize, rice, sogo were stagnant. They were not increasing. So one is left wondering whether it is about how we measure those yields or it is about the figures we are reporting as application risk of fertilizers. There are some questions that remain unanswered. Basically, this consists of subsidizing farm inputs. And these farm inputs is basically chemical fertilizers. The bulk of the, the subsidy goes into chemical fertilizers and other pest, chemical pesticides. And uh, we think that this goes ag against agroecology because then we should be looking at how to invest in the way we can recycle nature itself in supporting small farmers and supporting women to be part of the production system. Rather than subsidizing chemical fertilizers, which only goes to the industries that produce these uh, chemicals. The president of the Peasant Farmers Association, PFAG, Mr. Abdul Rahman Mohammed, called on the government to promote the joint use of organic and inorganic fertilizers in the short run and promote organic fertilizer in the long run. He said it was highly important for farmers to know and understand the practice of agroecology farming to increase farm yields and improve consumers' health. The agri extension officers are recommending three bags of inorganic fertilizer for one acre. But now, it has gone beyond that. If you, if you see where they are able to use only three bags, it means that they have already added uh, manure to it. That is why they are doing that, or else they have to add more than four or five to be able to, to meet the, the, the target. So I think that uh, agroecology is very, very helpful to the smallholder farmers. Already we are in it. Smallholder farmers in Ghana 
have petitioned the president to adopt a more sustainable investment drive for agriculture and cut down on over-reliance on the use of inorganic fertilizer. Farmer-based organizations like CICOT, PFAG and Food Sovereignty have organized rallies and peaceful demonstrations calling on the government to shift the budget for agriculture from subsidies for chemical inputs to agroecology and are also calling on the government to heavily subsidize compost to enable smallholder farmers patronize as the benefits are enormous. There is no evidence of value for money investing heavily on fiscal. Fiscal reforms by government needs to more aggressively embrace and promote sustainable agriculture to smallholder farmers. This will require an integrated soil fertility management approach that promotes the joint use of organic and inorganic fertilizers in the short run and promote organic fertilizer in the long run consciously promote agroecological farming through farmer-managed natural regeneration of trees, agroforestry, and recomposting. Located at Ajin Kotoku near Midye off the Akran Sawam Road, is the Accra Compost and Recycling Plant ACAP, an integrated waste processing and recycling company. It was established to receive, sort, process and recycle solid and liquid waste to produce organic compost for agronomic purposes in Ghana and the sub-region. Over here we received 600 tons of waste from the municipality, that is from the towns, and then we turn them into organic compost for all agriculture purposes. You can see how the particles are very fine, and also you can also see the chaff in it. This tells you that it's 100% organic. We've not added anything to it, to any booster, no way. It looks like sand. It's, it looks like sand, but you know, but it's organic. The public-private partnership company established in July 2012, is on the government's subsidy list. Currently, a bag of ACAP compost is sold for 15 Ghana cities. It's readily available. You know, we sell them through distributors, agrochemical dealers, and also agents. And a uh, bag goes under the subsidy, this is, goes for 15 Ghana cities. That's it. So farmers really embrace it. And in fact, it is really giving them good results. So they have really embraced the concept. The Minister of Agriculture, Dr. Usu Efriye Akuto, said compost is now gaining popularity in the country. Therefore, the Ministry of Agriculture have put in place plans to ensure that compost is included as one of the agricultural inputs that benefits from the ministry's subsidies. We are looking at it, obviously we are providing subsidies uh, for other inputs, so I don't see why we cannot do it for compost. Compost is not very popular, it's now gaining popularity, especially in the area of vegetables. And as I told you, vegetable is the high end of the market, is the area of uh, industry where uh, young people could easily be attracted to because the margins are huge. So definitely we'll be looking at it and uh, we will ensure that uh, compost in the future benefits from the subsidies that we are given for agricultural inputs. Mr. Tetanati is a farmer in Abokobi. He has been in this business for the past 36 years. The 67 year old farmer says he has been practicing agroecology all these years. According to him, he gets better yields for this type of practice as the soil is always rich. Every week we clean the leftover food from the cages. When we clean them, we deposit on the food. This is as a manure as well. I support the agroecology because it's a fixed thing. When you bring the 
uh, cattle droppings or droppings from the fowls to the farm. When you really apply it the way um, uh, our agriculturists have recommended, the fertility will be in the soil for five solid years. It maintains the soil. I mean, as I said, it is always fertile. Another advantage is that crops grown on uh, eco-ecology uh, practice, or those who are practicing that, the crops last longer. They taste better. Tomatoes used to uh, be on the shelf for two, three weeks without rotting, with eco-ecology. But with the chemical fertilizer, within two, three days, they all started rotting like that. So to me, uh, I would rather advise government that we should do the agroecology with because it is the best. It is the best. Then, when you apply the manure well applied, even if the rain happens to stop midway, it, uh, with the manure application, the plants are able to stand. It sustains them, unlike the uh, chemical fertilizers some my farmers use. He urged the government to heavily subsidize compost producing companies in order to encourage more to enter the business as it will also manage solid and liquid waste, which are currently a major challenge to the government. It is the agriculture sector that will absorb all. It will answer the question of unemployment, but make the sector lucrative. So when the youth are going there, they go there with uh, uh, boldness, they go there willingly. They go there with assurance. It is the only sector that can answer the question of unemployment. Agriculture and food production are the base of life and the economy and have multiple functions in creating healthy societies. They are at the center of addressing challenges including hunger and poverty, climate change and environment, income and employment. A transition to greener, more productive agroecological farming allows local people to lead in creating solutions. Agroecological farming is certainly key to a sustainable future.